What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. We finally got the contender back. It's got new fuel tanks. We spent the last two days running checks on it, fixing everything, getting it right. We've been out here since 4.30 this morning catching live bait. I don't even turn the camera on. I put one bait on just to see if the fish are biting and it doesn't take very long. We got something on. Mm. No, 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 no. I'm putting way too much heat on him though. Shark, 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 shark! Ah. Ah. <laughs> oh. Did he foul hook? Oh no, he had shark! Oh shit. Shark! <laughs> Where's he at? Come on! <laughs> You guys, we just dodged a bullet, but we got a nice kingfish in the boat. Holy cow, that shark came out of nowhere. <laughs> I get the blood pumping. That's called teamwork. Look at that triple hook rig, son. Those, those new J hooks I bought do not play around. Look at the teeth on that joker. That was a good save with the gaff. As soon as I loosened the drag, the shark showed up and then I couldn't gain on him. Now in today's video, we're gonna go over what we did with the boat and we're going fishing. That is my good buddy, Tom, who owns Blind Date Charters in Fort Myers. He came over and saved the day with my boat. He has helped me so much, it's insane. He's a charter captain out of Fort Myers. And if you're anywhere in that area, I promise you, he will put you on as many fish as you've ever caught in your life. But we're gonna go over a lot today. So be prepared to see a lot of footage. A lot of fish that you catch, you need to put on ice in a hurry, but a kingfish specifically needs to go on ice immediately and keep them covered in ice. Bro, that shark came from nowhere. Ooh. Hot rodding. Do y'all deal with sharks that bad in Fort Myers? No, no, we, are, we keep all our fish. <laughs> yeah. We keep them whole. <laughs> How much did he say those things were this morning? A hundred a dozen. A hundred dollars a dozen for these baits right here, folks. We contemplated selling them when we got to the ramp instead of going fishing. Yep, exactly how I did it. We've just got three J hooks, a 60 pound test leader. I tried to get him to swim straight down. Dude, that fish hit while he was going out. Yep. Let him go wide open. Yeah. So while he's dropping that bait down, I'll explain why Seymour Maps is so important. You can see it actually shows me the bottom. I know right here's the ledge and I'm drifting across it. Even when I get across it, I know because I can see it. If you're a saltwater fisherman and you fish anywhere off the east or west coast of Florida, all the way up to, I think, Jacksonville and even farther than Jacksonville, all the way down to the Keys, Seymour Maps is a chip that you can put in your Simrad or your Lowrance, and that thing is a game changer. Look at the fish. We're gonna have to drop a chicken rig down in a minute. So in the link in the description below this video, I have all of Seymour Maps information, and if you use promo code BLUEGABE, you save 10%. The chips are expensive, but trust me, if you calculate how much time I've spent around this ocean riding around looking, it's way cheaper to buy the chip. I don't even use my GPS numbers anymore. I simply use my Seymour. So we put this rod in the rod holder with the goggle eye on it and he's getting some squid ready for the chicken rig. Marking solid fish on the bottom. Uh oh, salty days is calling. Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> Who's this? Who's this? Talk, talk to me. This be Blue Gabe. We've already got one kingfish. We stopped here at Six Mile. Right where I lost my anchor last year. First drop with a goggle eye. Got a kingfish and a shark about 80 met the boat. But we're marking tons of snapper. Awesome. 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 I look forward to getting out there. We're at the pile right now. Screwing around. Gonna get some food too for Sean. That's the shark right there. 
So if you're interested in doing a fishing trip here in Stewart, Florida, check out Salty Days, Captain Rich. He is phenomenal and he's who put us on the bait this morning. We got out here in the black dark to catch those goggle eyes. Nothing? We might need to pull back up. It's probably, like I said, those Tom Tates. Oh, yeah. it up. Uh oh. There we go. That's acting like a short beeliner. Gotta get him in before that shark wants them. That shark tried to hammer that kingfish. what I say? A short beeliner? Short. That's a keeper, isn't it? No, you gotta be 12 inches over here. So right now you can actually see I'm not near the ledge. I need to go ahead and pull back up to it. Hopefully that rod bends over soon. Oh man, they're on it. Just all for, small bee liners. We need, for a twofer. we need to get farther That's offshore and we'll get in bigger ones. Yeah. There's absolutely no current today. That's probably why this... Oh, that's a good ceviche fish and he's a keeper. Put him in that net right there and I'll show him. You guys, that might not look like much, but that's a keeper lane snapper and I can make the best meal in the world out of him. I'll just put him right in there. Let's see how long it takes you to get bit as soon as you hit the bottom. Not very long. Nope. That felt like a beeliner. Uh oh, he's getting awful scared. Coming across that ledge. Oh, that's a little bit better. Trigger fish. I hope it's a trigger. I want one so bad for dinner. That's two fur. that mutton. Dang, a short mutton snapper. Who says a chicken rig don't catch mutton? Yeah, too bad he's just short. It's fun size. See you, buddy. Little dinky fish. That's not what we marked. And we're not marking them now. We gotta get back up there. Yeah, it feels like a porgy or something. As long as it eats. As long as it eats. Different current here? No, same current. I'm gonna pull back up on them right though. That's probably what it all was. So we're just running along and we marked this spot on Seymour and I stopped to see what would be on it. Man, it was loaded with fish. You'll see them pop up on this screen in a minute as soon as I get back to the tip of that black line. They're all back. Yeah, I mean, here they come, but that's not even as thick as it was. and send her down. There's some big bee liners here somewhere. We are definitely struggling this morning to put very many fish in the boat. But that's because, like I said earlier, we went way offshore, current was ripping. Then we went to the north out in 140 and the fish just don't seem to be biting here. So now we're going to work our way back towards Stewart and Jupiter and get in that 75, 80 foot. Try to catch some more kingfish and maybe some muttons. That's our boat. We're coming right across. This whole thing right here was fish just a minute ago. We're going to go get in about 75 foot of water. I think we should stop and try to chum up some sharks though in between now and going in. I love catching sharks. No, we're not catching them. What? We're gonna catch the cobia. Come on, I love catching sharks. Catch me one shark, I'll be happy. Oh, not even close to illegal. There it ain't. What you reckon you got? Probably a walleye. How long is your leader? Uh, 15, 16 foot. Better get the gap. Keep going. 
kingfish. Is it a king? Big one. Sure. It's a kingfish or a barracuda. Looking like a barracuda. Big barracuda. We need some fresh chum for the sharks. Gosh, what a barracuda. Dang. Look at how did he not even get off? Look at that hook on him. Let's go chum up a shark. Well, that couldn't have went any better. So we pulled up to the USS Rankin. If you follow along very much and you ever saw us come out here and spear Kobe off bull sharks, that's where we're at. We're gonna try to chum these sharks up and see if they have any cobia with them. And we actually needed that barracuda for fresh chum. That's the shipwreck right there. We do have a boat with some free divers in it right there. So that might stop us from seeing cobia. I don't know. Maybe they'll shoot them. Yeah, I mean, there's the sharks right there. Go ahead and tie him on that. Take that bonita off and tie that barracuda on. Look at the fish. But can y'all smell it? I, if if they could only smell it. <laughs> Look at the teeth. They got all them teeth and not, no toothbrush, my mama said. This should get the sharks up here pretty quick. We just pulled up to spot number, I think, 232 of the morning. We'll see if we can't get bit. I'm marking some fish. He just lost his bait. All you can do is keep on keeping on. Well, that didn't take very long. Just doesn't feel like what I'm after. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. But he's short. Dang it, it's a trigger fish. How big those gotta be? I don't know, but he's not keeper. I think they gotta be 12 inches. Yeah, not this size. Drop back down. Still marking fish. Tom's using a whole goggle eye. I'm using squid. Yeah, that's a trigger. You always want to keep a good bend in your rod. Short trigger fish. Another short. Man, that stinks having to throw these back. That right there, folks, is a good eating fish that gets to go live another day. One good 15 pound mutton and I'd be a happy camper. We should probably have one of these goggle eyes out on a flat line. Get a in the boat. Let's get a mutton in the boat, he said. We already got a king. Yeah, but we could catch a sailfish, a dolphin. So I got my boat back a couple days ago. It was actually in the shop for like five weeks, I think, total. Ended up needing to do a little bit more work to it once we got it back. And then yesterday, we thought the boat had a hole in it because we were test driving it and there was water coming in the hole. After like four hours of investigating, we found out that it was a wash down. The raw water, salt water wash down pump has a high speed pickup. So when we were running, it was forcing water into the boat. Normally wouldn't be a big deal because it would stay in the water hose, but the hose had a leak. So I almost had a mental breakdown. I thought my boat had an actual hole in it. Ended up just being a hose. Now I've got my Isinglass in the shop getting repaired, which is the, the protection around my center console to keep the wind and the rain off of you. Once that's back, we're good to go. How come I'm not getting bit? Oh, I say that. I say, I say that. Got him. I say that. What you got? Oh, shoot, I'm on too. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Whoa. See what we got. Uh oh, that looks like the right color. That looks like the right color. 
That looks yep. like the right color. There you go. Now you have a fish on? Yeah. Go ahead. We got a mouton. Crank and crank. Look at y'all. Tick a tick a tick a tick. <laughs> if I get glad. We can't even I'll... see you right now. That's the way I like it. So the fish can't see me. You got you a rudder fish or yeah. a kingfish. Look at all the rudders swimming down there. Look at the yellowtails with them. I think those are other, 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 other. Oh, look at the yellowtails right there. Those are yellowtail snapper. Rainbow runners. No. Yes. Negative. If those are yellowtails, we're fixing to jack up some flags. Let's do it. Woo! That's what I'm talking about, folks. At home, we got us a keeper mutton. Just in case y'all were wondering what we did with that barracuda, we did not just waste them. We actually kept them. We got plenty of fish to eat. And just like that, we're back at the house, folks. But what do you think is going on here? Before I get started telling you guys what is going on there, I gotta tell you about a trip coming up on June 23rd to Sportfish Panama Island Lodge. This trip is going to be amazing. We're gonna to fly to Panama and spend three days there at the Sportfish Panama Lodge. We're gonna be doing fishing, some spear fishing, some snorkeling, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I'm gonna have everything about that trip in the link in the description below this video. It will answer all your questions and you can come on this trip. Yes, before you even ask, it's super expensive. I've been saving up for a while, but this is a trip of a lifetime. So if you're interested in coming on a trip with me, being on the same island, doing the same things that I'm doing, check the link in the description below and you can sign up for this amazing trip. Now, if you're wondering what I'm gonna do with this kingfish or how it even got like that, I clean these at the boat ramp. I don't normally do that. I clean them here at my house. I got my nine inch Danko flay knife and I'm just cutting them up in steaks. It's literally that simple. Now the reason I didn't flay it is because you often see everybody flay kingfish. I want to steak it. I want to make a kingfish steak salad for myself today for lunch before I go get the kids. Now if you're wondering what's going on here, these are the goggle eyes that we caught. They sell these things for $12 a piece almost. Actually $10 a piece, but if you buy 50, they're $12 a piece. I just put some normal salt on them and then I vacuum sealed them in my Outrigger Outdoors vacuum sealer. And now when I go to Panama, I can take these with me because snappers and groupers will destroy these things dead or alive. So I know you guys know I love my Lowry's garlic salt, but if you follow along and have been following along, you've seen this seasoning before, and I'm telling you, this stuff is the bomb diggity. I'll lather it up on both sides. No olive oil, no nothing. Doesn't need it. If you're interested in this queuing it up, they're offering a sale right now, only in the link in the description below this video. Go find that name right there, Click on the link and use promo code BLUEGABE and you can save a pretty good chunk off of all your seasonings. All right, my grill is set at 3.30. Not gonna cook it very long. Hot and fast is how I want it. Oh, I wish y'all could smell this right here. I can assure you it smells good. Look at that right there, cooked to perfection. Just gonna take one piece, set it right here. Y'all see that stuff? That seasoning, this sauce, take your fingers like this, just drizzle it on. That, folks, is a meal fit for a king. It simply doesn't get any better than that. Fresh kingfish caught yesterday. My buddy Tom actually had to go home a little bit early. He had been over here for like three days helping me. And I assure you, blind date charters on Fort Myers Beach, he is one of the best, if not the best in that area. And he's one of my best friends. He helped me so much. And just the same back in Hurricane Ian, I had him and his family come over here and they brought their boat because most of you already know Hurricane Ian devastated Fort Myers. And because he was able to bring his stuff here and his family here, there were no worries. So many people smoke kingfish and that's all they do with it. It is so good when cooked right. That right there is so moist. Man, that's cooked to perfection. Look at that. I wish y'all could taste this. This is actually really, really good. I'm gonna sit here and enjoy the rest of the meal. Go over there and sit down on my computer, edit this entire video, get it up, go get my kids from school, and we're gonna go try to catch a big sail catfish, a saltwater catfish. 
another fish that not many people eat. Now, a ton of people eat kingfish, but they don't eat it like this. Not very many people at all eat sail cats, but we're gonna eat them tonight for dinner. All right, I gotta go put all these goggle eyes in the freezer and get to editing. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for all the positive comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. Until next time, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all.